Well, here we go. The run and gun that I have been dreading for a long time, but has been requested by you guys quite a lot. So I guess give the people what they want. And here we are doing the run and gun with an 1886 LaBelle rifle. The LaBelle rifle is truly one of the greatest innovations in firearm history. You had smokeless powder introduced with this rifle, and the French all of a sudden had the best rifle the world had ever seen. These are strange now, but at the time, were absolutely incredible. You had a new cartridge and a new rifle that doubled the effective range of old black powder rifles and it sent everyone into a frenzy. Not to mention it just had smokeless powder, but eventually they introduced a Spitzer bullet, which is a pointed bullet. Um, it was not introduced with the cartridge originally, but it was added later. Um, if you'd like to learn more about this, I'm, I'm sure that Nathaniel F. could learn you. But they do have a tube magazine. Um, you might wonder how to store pointy bullets in line with one another. But you can see that the French put a recess around the primer pocket so that you could store the pointy bullets in line with one another. Now to load the label is really not pleasant at all. You open the mechanism and then it's almost like loading a like a shotgun but from the top. You basically click the rounds into the magazine um, one by one so there's no way to quickly load it like as a Mauser or something with an in block clip which most other major powers in World War One had. So I would make the case that during World War One this rifle was already obsolete. Um, so let's try this run and gun, I guess. We're going to fire the tube magazine and then single load, as I guess that's the only way to make sense. And I'm going to fire some single shots on the run, like you would do if you're running across a trench line and you didn't want to not have ammo. So 70 yards, 24 shots, here we go. All right, guys, here we go with one of the most requested rifles for this. That's going to be a LaBelle. Basically, I'm going to fire the entire tube magazine and then just single load because in World War I, well, in World War II, French troops probably wouldn't have taken the time to sit and reload if there were enemies charging at them. So here I go, and I'm ready to embarrass myself. It. let's go talk about it a little bit okay so that was probably the weirdest run and gun I've ever done um, when I used a single shot rifle uh, the rolling block at least you know it's a single shot rifle so you're kind of prepared but with this gun after you run out of rounds in the magazine it's just like regressing back to a chaspo or something like that so it's very strange and as you saw it didn't eject the shell all the time so I had to really kind of muscle it out to make them you know leave the gun and then often I was kind of flipping them out of there but I fired a total of 24 rounds, normally it's 25, I guess I 
forgot to load one extra in the pouch, but I can say that it is pretty dang accurate. The sights are very simple, but I believe I landed 24 out of 24 hits. I'll count the pings and put the totals hits versus misses here, but I can say with some confidence that when the LaBelle was introduced, it was the best rifle in the world, but it held on to that title for maybe a year and a half or two years. So let's go back to the room and talk about it just a little more. All right, so that was probably the least graceful run and gun I've ever done. Um, I will admit it was probably the most interesting one I've ever done because in World War One, if you heard the whistle and you had to charge across no man's land, then you fired your magazine, and if you were still alive, you obviously just didn't stop and reload. You threw around in there and hopefully fired it at the enemy, and that was uh, a daunting task to say the least. I would much rather have a Berthier or an RSC 1917, I guess, if I was really lucky, but... I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I can't really say that I did, but at least I kind of got a feel for how crude these were um, come World War I. I'm sure in 1886, everyone was happy to have one, but I would really, really have rather had pretty much anything else in World War I. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Special thanks to Ventura Munitions, and we hope to see you next time.